Well, Canada is gearing up for the legalization of recreational marijuana. And beyond the investor curiosity, we've seen a range of industries trying to figure out how they're going to be affected. BNM Bloomberg recently reported Molson Coors has spoken with several marijuana companies about making an investment. And the industry is attracting a range of leaders familiar with running consumer businesses. Daniel O'Neill, for example, recently joined the board of cannabis investor Canada Royalty. Longtime BNM viewers will recall Dan's days running Molson, where he served as CEO. He's also worked at several big U.S. consumer companies, including Campbell's Soup, and more recently in the e-cigarette market. As you can see, Dan O'Neill joining us this morning from Ottawa. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, as we mentioned, you've got a very long history in the consumer industry. When did you first get curious about the cannabis industry? Well, I'll be honest, I think when my children started uh, using it. But, uh, no, I... Over the last several years, two or three years, I started looking at the industry, did a lot of research, was able to obtain a lot of research that was out there, big studies, traditional consumer products type studies. You know, 1,700 people in Canada were re interviewed in one. I also have a home, and the ESIG company I ran is in Denver, so I, I got to see the whole evolution of pre-legalization, legalization, you know, the onslaught of dispensaries. So it all, it's so prevalent in everyone's life. You just, you have to be blind if you're not observing it and part of it. And then as a business person, you're recognizing the opportunity there. So it, it's been a silver three, four year period. Interesting. And Canna Royalty joined the board there, which is, has been looking at uh, business opportunities on both sides of the board. It's really, a, uh, you know, when we, when we talk about a lot of the different cannabis companies out there, uh, in this case, one that was modeled after businesses like Franco Nevada. Uh, a lot of businesses that need some investment uh, in exchange for uh, a royalty. Um, this is a business that has focused on some of the legal markets in the U.S., but also keeping an eye on Canada. Uh, what, 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 do you, um, what do you think about that business model as opposed to running a sort of a straight cannabis company? Well, I think it, I think there's strengths. I mean, it, with this growth, and you see it. I worked a lot, I worked several years running companies in South America where it's high inflation and growth, and you see, you know, the ability to have cash to manage the growth is critical. Um, you can look at the industry, and you're running out of cash, and you're running out of cash as you as you try to keep up with the industry. So I looked at at Canada Royalty and saw a management team that had a lot of experience in raising money and and managing money, I looked at the management team and felt, and, it, and one other big element was the fact they were in California. I mean, it's, it's sort of the leader in the industry as a whole in the development of product. And I, I saw that combination of being able to manage the cash, then being able to manage the growth because of the management team that's, the, that's there, and then the experience that they were gaining in California. And, and you, foothold in California. And you talked Sorry. about your experience in running businesses in South America. I remember many years ago when you would join us here on BNN, you were talking about mm -hmm. Molson's expansion into Brazil. And I know you're not involved with Molson in any way uh, these days, but uh, we had reported here that Molson Coors is talking to a few players in the industry. We've already seen Constellation, a U.S.-based right. spirits operator, make a big investment in Canopy. Would you be surprised to see Molson Coors make a big investment in the Canopy? industry? I don't have much at this point in time. I'm not close to what they're doing. I would say the cash that's generated from the beer industry, the declining markets of the big of the big brewers given the craft beer, you know, expansion and preference really for a lot of individuals that that cash has to be profitably allocated. And I can see that. I can see that happening. The youth that manages some of the beer companies will be much more open to do that. The older board members will probably be a little more hesitant, but there will be that, that conversation going on, I think, in most of the, of the brewers. So the conversation's taking place. Um, certainly when you talk to the heads of the cannabis companies these days, there's no shortage of hyperbole. Um, the, <laughs> the CEO of Canopy Growth, who comes on frequently, had said that he felt like the alcohol industry, the farm industry, they're shaking in their boots because of, of what's coming. D do you think that these industries, whether it's the alcohol business, whether it's the pharma business, are truly shaking in their boots when it comes to cannabis? Well, the thing is, when I, when I joined Molson's in 1999, if you read the 
annual report, you saw the beer industry is declining because of the advent and growth of wine in, in North America and the expansion of wine. And so how do you overcome that? And then you move forward and, and you saw, you know, the craft, the craft, the small brewers. They weren't craft brewers. There were the Sierra Nevadas in California. You know, there were Belgian beer out of, out of Colorado. And you, and you saw these breweries, 200 million, 180 million dollars, which were small, but they were growing and growing and growing, and people preferred those to the big guys. So the big guys have been constantly hammered on by these new, the advent of, of new. And then it's evolved all the way to the fact that now you have these small craft breweries and people lining up to get the next batch, you know, of, of their preferred beer. Sure. And that craftness, I think, you are going to see also in the cannabis industry where, you know, California has a couple of branded products that are strong and growing and, and you know, the opportunity to purchase them or join with them to grow for needed cash there. You'll see the same in, you know, in, in other states as they legalize. You know, Colorado yeah. has a couple of those. And so you're going to see that happen. So the... The bigness of the breweries, where they were the leaders, has evolved, has you know dwindled. I just worry in the in the in the cannabis industry, are the craft people going to be the leaders? And the association with the craft, you know, growers, is where you should be. Hmm. We're talking with Dan O'Neill, former uh, CEO of Molson, now board director at Canna Royalty. And Dan, uh, one of the things that the CEO of Canna Royalty, Mark Lustig, has talked about with us in the past is that early on, because so many of these cannabis businesses were startups, let's face it, uh, and, sure. and, and, and they're associated with an industry that in the past was, was not a legal one, uh, that it was difficult to get their hands on capital. So that created an opportunity for a player right. like Canna Royalty. They can go out, they can provide some, some capital, they can get a royalty stream. But a lot has changed uh, since we first started talking to our viewers about the Canna Royalty story over the last couple of years. You're now seeing big banks here in Canada, like Bank of Montreal, uh, make their balance sheet available for big lending to some of these cannabis companies. Sure. Do, do you yeah. feel like you're starting to see a change on that front uh, uh, with banks being much more accepting of financing these companies? No, I, th I think they will be for sure. It's, it's going to be real. You know, it, it's, once it becomes legalized, there will be always you know, the stigma, for lack of a better word, the stigma of associating with, you know, with these companies for a group of, of shareholders of any of these big companies. Um, and it's the openness and, and you know, the ability to accept these types of these these types of brands, and once that be happens, then everyone will have to open up to be competitive. So it's just a matter of time. So Dan, beyond your uh, new board role at Canna Royalty, are you investing in the cannabis area? Are you buying the stocks? <laughs> yes. And for those people who are emailing <laughs> yes, us all day long or tweeting at us about yeah. what the outlook is for cannabis stocks here in Canada, what would you say? Would you be a buyer? a seller or just avoiding uh, some of these cannabis companies? I'm a buyer, um, mainly due to the fact of growth. You gotta look at my background. I was with Campbell Soup and the H.A. Heinz Company. The growth in you know, tomato soup or chicken noodle soup and, and the fight for growth every quarter and every month. This is gonna explode. And the explosion you know, will, will have an impact. Uh, I think also the difference of Canada Royalty and, and the part that I liked is they are, they are concerned about making a profit. You know, I mentioned earlier in your show the Tesla situation. Well, you know, they're doing well. They got their new product out there, but their cash position is horrible. You know, you saw that in, in a lot of the new startups, which grew and grew and grew and didn't make any money for a long time. I think there's going to be a pressure to make money here and managing your P&L and managing your costs. And that, I think, will differentiate the people who continue to go and continue to grow and participate versus the ones that will fall by the wayside. And, and, and to that point, when you've got companies that now have multi-billion dollar valuations and for now are generating millions of dollars, this, this question around consolidation, I mean, we've seen it in the beer industry, heck, Molson and Coors coming yeah. together. <laughs> Do you think cannabis consolidation is a reality? I do think it's real. I think it'll happen. Um, the matter, of, you know, we'd all we'd like to know and is when. I think there'll be a lot more 
several more years of, you know, who's winning, who's getting to the top, who's falling off, what strategies are going to be the, the correct strategies. Um, and that'll happen. You also, again, related to the beer industry, you had the people who love making beer at home. And so you have more than the craft guys versus the big guys. You've got these people who, who produce beer at home and enjoy it and have their friends over and, and, you'll, and just love them and have the passion for that. Well, you're going to have the growers here as well. So you're going to have that group of people with whatever number of plants they're going to have at home, plus you know, the, the other elements of, of competition. So it'll be interesting to see where it you know, sort of ends up. But sure, there's going to be a consolidation. Globally is interesting what's going to happen globally. To me, it's still far away from that point, but that's still an evolution coming down the road. Yeah, we're talking with Dan O'Neill, former CEO of Molson, now board director at Canna Royalty. Dan, before we let you go, you mentioned your, your chicken soup days, so obviously your, your time at Campbell, <laughs> a, a, a company that's trying to figure out its own future right now. And then you have this, this issue around uh, trade wars, tariff fighting, what people are going to do at the grocery store. Are they going to buy Canadian or buy American? Do you, do you have any thoughts on the tariff war right now? I just I look at it as an outside observer and being impacted by cost. I'm also on the board of Bombardier, uh, Sidu and Skidoo uh, products, and and you look at it from the point of view of you know the tit for tat. You do this, we'll do that. I think you know before it gets any further down the road, we've got to get back. We being Canada have got to get back and have a discussion. Let's not let it go so far that it's irreparable. The new Mexican president yesterday was talking, you know, very positively about the U.S. and the Trump administration and how they want to remain friends and, and go forward with this, with this agree, their agreement. And I think, uh, I'm, believe me, I'm not a politician in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I believe that it's time to settle down because there will be a lot of impact that we don't even recognize as Canadians. All right. Lots to watch for. Dan, thanks for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Dan O'Neill, board director at Canna Royalty, the former CEO of Molson, joining us from Ottawa. Coming